They reached Old Stones after eight more days of steady rain, and made their camp upon the hill overlooking the Blue Fork, within a ruined stronghold of the ancient River Kings. Its foundations remained amongst the weeds to show where the walls and keeps had stood. But the local small folk had long ago made off with most of the stones to raise their barns and septs and holdfasts. Yet in the centre of what once would have been the castle's yard, a great carved sepulchre still rested, half hidden in the waist-high brown grass amongst a stand of ash. The lid of the sepulchre had been carved into a likeness of the man whose bones lay beneath, but the rain and wind had done their work. The king had worn a beard, they could see, but otherwise his face was smooth and featureless, with only the vague suggestions of a mouth, a nose, eyes, and the crown about the temples. His hands folded over the shaft of a stone warhammer that lay upon his chest. Once the warhammer would have been carved with runes that told its name and history, but all that the centuries had worn away. The stone itself was cracked and crumbling at the corners, discoloured here and there by spreading white splotches of lichen, while wild roses crept up over the king's feet almost to his chest. It was there that Catelyn found Rob, standing somber in the gathering dusk, with only grey wind beside him. The rain had stopped for once, and he was bareheaded. Does this castle have a name? He asked quietly when she came up to him. Old stones, all the small folk called it when I was a girl. But no doubt it had some other name when it was still the Hall of Kings. She had camped here once with her father on their way to Seaguard. Peter was with us too. There's a song, he remembered. Jenny of old stones, with the flowers in her hair. We're all just songs in the end, if we are lucky. She had played at being Jenny that day, had even wound flowers in her hair, and Peter had pretended to be her Prince of Dragonflies. Catelyn could not have been more than twelve, Peter just a boy. Rob studied the sepulchre. Whose grave is this? Here lies Christopher. The fourth of his name, King of the Rivers and the Hills. Her father had told her his story once. He ruled from the trident to the neck, thousands of years before Jenny and her prince, in the days when the kingdoms of the first men were falling, one after the other, before the onslaught of the Andals. The Hammer of Justice, they called him. He fought a hundred battles, and won nine and ninety or so the singers say, and when he raised his castle, it was the strongest in Westeros. She put a hand on her son's shoulder. He died in his hundredth battle, when seven Andal kings joined forces against him. The fifth Christopher was not his equal, and soon the kingdom was lost, and then the castle, and the last of all the line. With Christopher V died House Mud, that had ruled the Riverlands for a thousand years before the Andals came. His heir failed him. Rob ran a hand over the rough, weathered stone. I had hoped to leave Jane with child. We tried often enough, but I'm not certain.